You're listening to the second season of The Study Podcast with Dr. Paul Wegner on Genesis. This episode, we're focused on the image of God. I'm Tyler Sanders. I'm Director of Communications at Gateway Seminary, and Dr. Paul Wegner is going to kick us into the Bible. Okay, let's look at the passages that actually deal with this. Yeah. And the first one is in Genesis 1.26. Mm-hmm. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So that's the first passage. Yeah. And then the second one is Genesis 5.3. Uh, when, when Adam lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his own image, according to his image, uh, his own likeness, I'm sorry, according to his image, and named him Seth. So I thought what was interesting about this passage is that the image can be passed on so a father can pass on his image to his son. And that got me thinking about Hebrews. In Hebrews 1, 3, it actually talks about Jesus being the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation mm. of his nature, and upholds all things by the words of his power. And when he made purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of neat, because what it's doing is it's telling how he's exactly the same nature but that makes sense because a father can pass that on to his son. Yeah, sure. So I thought that was neat. Yeah, and it seems like there's three key words here really, right? Okay. Image, likeness, representation. Well, we're going to talk about one of them. Okay. <laughs> Here's your Hebrew word for the day. Oh, perfect. <laughs> this is a throwback to yeah. our Study Isaiah podcast. That's all right. I love the Hebrew word of the day. So it's the word selim, and it means image, <laughs> idol, statue, likeness, any of those words. So how can we be made in God's image when he's, like John tells us, uh, John uh, 4.24 says that God is spirit, and those Mm. who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, sure. So how can we be in his image if he's spirit? And how would we know? Because those words seem to have a physical aspect to it. Yeah, yeah, idols specifically, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, So when it says that we're in God's image, it must not primarily be his physical image, Mm. but probably his essence or his nature or like that. So he's given us a character, his character. Okay. Yeah. 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 So here's here's what we must reflect him in some way. Wayne Grudem says the fact that a man is in the image of God means that a man is like God and represents God. So image means something similar, but not identical to that thing being uh, referred to. Does that make sense? An image is is not the same thing, but it's a reflection of it or something like that. Is reflection a good? I think think it's a good metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Some theologians have suggested intellect, emotion, and will, and that, or the ability to make moral decisions or willing uh, choices or creativity or man's original moral purity or immorality, or immorality, um, or his dominion over the earth. They've suggested those kind of things. Those are the, those are like the specific characteristics that you would be reflecting yeah. Yeah. or taking um, on as an image bearer, kind of. And I'm not sure that they've still kind of got what it means yet. Okay. So what I want to, uh, well, and here's what I, it seems like it refers to all the ways that God, the, the ways that we are like God. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so Wayne Grudem also says, every way in which a man is like God is part of his being in his like, uh, image and likeness of God. So I want to say that the image of God is the ability to mirror the attributes of God. And I got this probably 30 years ago from Dr. John Walton. Hmm. And I think he's right. I think what it's getting at is that it's God's put that ability in us that we can reflect his character. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a little example. Like God is omniscient, so he's all powerful, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, omniscient, he's he's all All knowing. knowing. Yeah. But I have some knowledge, okay? He's omnipotent, so he has all power, but I have a little power. Yeah. Or he's omnipresent, but I'm located in one spot. Uh-huh. Or God is love, and I have some love. So in in one way, here's God that's a perfect representation of this, mm-hmm. and I reflect it to a little extent. Yeah. And and I would actually argue that Christians are better than any other way, any other people in reflecting his character. Sure. And yeah, I, yeah. I've got this picture to show you this, mm. th- this beautiful reflection. Yeah. And as we mirror God's images, I hope that we're a perfect reflection of him. And then, and I think the closer we get to him and the more we act like him, the better we reflect him. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think that's helpful. Yeah, that's an important aspect of that, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. Uh, so remember, I said it refers to all the ways that we are like him. So I have, I have a, a passage from Acts. Okay. In Acts uh, uh, 11.25, it said, And he, Barnabas, left for Torres uh, to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, and, he, and it came about that for an entire year they met with the church and taught considerable numbers uh, members, and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Remember, Christians, the word itself means little Christ. Yeah. And so the, I think they were catching the, the nuance of we are reflecting God by we being in his image. Yeah. So I think that's what that was getting at. Right. So I think Paul often tells us to follow his example and yeah. be like him. Yeah. And I think that's what he's saying. We have that image of God in us, so we have that ability to reflect him. And uh, and you may get to this later, but I, yeah. I think this is a this is an important distinction to make here. Yeah. All humanity bears God's image, right? Yes. Yeah. And so you're kind of saying that the the difference in Christians is that they represent God's image Better. more effectively or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I would I would hope we look more like him yeah. than a normal human being. Yeah. Because we have more of his character displayed in our lives, I hope. Yeah. Does that make sense? So we're displaying yeah, yeah. that more than a nominal uh, person is, a normal person. And maybe that's kind of being united in Christ. Certainly our redemption, I think, sure. would be you know a major yeah. part of that. But there's probably something I would imagine in like our union with Christ kind of yeah. being brought into, yeah. you know, grafted into like the fold, all these kind of things yeah. are going to be things that make you a better reflection. Is yes. that is that fair to say? Yep, I think so. Okay. So that that means we can work on that reflection. So mm. it's, he's put the image in us, but we can enhance it, make it better, make it look more like him. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I actually yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's discipleship kind of, I And guess, it gives right? us a, a job the rest of our life, you know. Yeah. We'll never be perfect, but we can reflect him more than we did last week. Yeah, right. So, so right. we've got a job to do, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let me show you another passage. First yeah. Corinthians 15, uh, verses 48 through 52 says this. As the earthly, so we are those. So are, we, are those who are earthly, and as it is heavenly, so are those who are heavenly. And just as we've borne the image of the earthly, we shall bear the image of the heavenly. See, it sounds like what that's telling us is that at some point, when we're uh, taken up to be with Him, we are going to reflect His image perfectly. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we just reflect it uh, to some extent. We'll get better at that. But we and we always should reflect it to some extent. Yeah. But we'll get better and better, and then in heaven we'll display it perfectly. So I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a great thought. I think. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm. I had one other uh, passage that I thought might help us in Second Corinthians four three through six. It says, "And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing." in whose case the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving, that may, they may not see the light of the gospel of the, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So once again, we had that example already given us, and now it helps us to reflect it more because we saw what he looked like. We saw mm -hmm. what he did. Yeah, sure. We saw how he behaved, yeah. and we should behave him like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, and you have those passages too of like, uh, I think it's in John where he's like, you know, uh, Jesus says like, to know the Father, look yeah. at me, know yeah, yeah. me, basically. Good, good. Um, I, I thought a mirror is a really good example of that. So God wants us to be like him, so uh, to be examples to the rest of the world. So just like a candle would reflect from a mirror, he wants us to do that. Hmm. But he made us in such a way that we have his image so that we can do what he wants us to do, hmm. okay? Christians should reflect him better than anyone else yeah. because we have more of the character of our Father in us. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's good. Now, why don't you tell me some of the implications of this? Can okay. you tell me a little bit about that? Like, yeah. why, what are we reflecting? What's the purpose of our reflection of God? I would think this is the, the best way for the world to then know if they ever want that, right? If if we display God's glory well, then I would think that'd be so appealing to a non-believer mm. that they would want that. They would want to 
grab hold of that and have that. Yeah. So it would seem like to me it's to it's to excite others to, to actually them wanting to be in the image of God also. Yeah. And and remember they already are, but this can make it, this can enhance it. They could be so much better in the image of God if they just accepted him and lived like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you said glory there too. Yeah. Which that was the first I think that was the first time we hit it, but I I I that was kind of my suspicion was that would be a big part of it is yeah. part of our image bearing is to bring glory to reflect God's glory. Yeah. Like, and to bring glory to him. Yeah, right. As we reflect it, then we'd be showing others what God's like. And just to remember, like Israel was supposed to be an example mm. to the rest of the nations. Oh, that, yeah, right, right, right. That when they looked at him, them, yeah. it was a light to the world to say, this is what our God is like. You'd probably want to have part of that too. Yeah. And as we reflect God and show his character to the world, it would seem like they would want to, they would want that too. Yeah. And I, I think we saw a lot of that when we were talking through Isaiah, that yeah. that was like supposed to be Israel's Goal, yeah. and that eventually, yeah, the nations would come, exactly, and, and like they would kind of maybe not through Israel, but that like they would set an example, and all these other nations would eventually fall in yeah. line, right? Yeah, and we, yeah, and remember, at the end of Isaiah, it actually does, it mm. does work. You know, yeah. the people come. It says they come to, to uh, want to follow his law and be like him too. They stream to to Zion. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Making the roads kind of yeah open or flat or whatever, and then everyone yeah. can come. Yeah, that's right, right. So it seems like to me, knowing about the image of God could be a really good way to then show the world that this is something they need. Mm. So that means we as Christians need to live that way. Right? Yeah, sure. Because yeah. if we're if we're a bad example or we're not doing something well, that's a reflection on God, mm. and they're not going to want it then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point, I think. Yeah. So, well, uh, there's a couple of pieces. Maybe we can talk about it in the, in the next episode. Just to okay. give a spoiler, you did tell me there yeah. were a few things you wanted to hit that were a little bit complicated. But maybe yeah. we can kind of do an introduction of some of these okay. ideas. Yeah. So, an interesting word that pops up in this the very first passage in Genesis one you showed was "our." Okay, and that's fascinating. So you're going to tell us a little bit about that next time, right? So what you're talking about is that in that verse it said, let us make man in our yeah. image. Well, why is it plural? Yeah, right, right. Okay. So yeah. we'll, we act, I have a chart on that that we can talk about it next week okay. or next episode. Yeah. And I think it'll help enlighten at least what view you hold. There's mm. there's like four different views and, and several will make sense. So okay. I think that'll be good for next podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, is there anything we can read for next week to, to prepare for that, you think? Um, probably just the biblical text, because okay. I think the biblical text, um, you know, the Genesis 1 passage where mm -hmm. it says, let us make man in our image, there are actually four times when it occurs. Um, so if you could actually find those, that'd be mm. good. In Genesis? Four uh, times? No, there's only three in Genesis and one in Isaiah. One in Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah 6, 3, I think it is. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay, that's good. Well, I look forward to next week. All right, we'll see you.